right. Okay. Go for Welcome it, Welcome back to another edition of King of the Court. We have a very, very special guest. The one, the only, I think, the face of the PPA, but she's more behind the mic. Is it the voice of the PPA? But also the voice of the PPA. Okay. The one and only Michelle McMahon. Mish, welcome to King of the Court. This has been a long time coming. Yep. Only 20 we invites of cool myself to, to you. At- just inviting myself on. Thank you. It's an honor. I mean, <laughs> listen, I wasn't going to say it, but I figured, you know, if you had to compare winning an Emmy or coming on King of the Court, it was pretty, it's it was this. a pretty easy choice. It's this. 12 yes. years and this, this is the pinnacle. You have finally reached the top of your career after 12 years. Yes. So Mish is the voice of the PPA. She, if you tune in to, actually you were just on Fox. Yeah. Pickleball TV. You've been on ESPN. Mm-hmm. I mean, you know, PPA will take whoever will have them. Um, <laughs> so you've been on every, every network. Tell us a little bit how you got started, one, in broadcasting, and two, in pickleball in general. Yeah, well, thank you for having me on first and foremost. I uh, listen to you guys every week. Thanks for not roasting me yet. Uh, Jimmy defended me to some trolls recently. Thank you, Jimmy. Um, <laughs> broadcasting where I began, kind of a winding journey. Honestly, I'll give you the like brief synopsis in as few words as possible, even though I talk a lot. But um, started in Chicago. I was a Big Ten volleyball player. I played volleyball at Michigan. So I started in oh, sales boy. and then segued that into a broadcasting career. I decided sales was... Not for me. I was good at it, but hated it. Was miserable. So I was like, I want to do the sports broadcasting thing. I don't know how the heck to break into this industry. I was completely untrained out of college, by the way, because Michigan doesn't have a, a journalism program or anything like that. You have to do all that outside of um, school. Oh, so as an athlete, like I didn't have an opportunity to go cover these events that all these other students were. So. I was just like, okay, I'm ready to do broadcasting, but how the heck do I start? So I began with a very small role as a Big Ten volleyball analyst. So I was on women's college volleyball matches, which is also kind of a segue into what I'm doing now with pickleball, except for in the play-by-play seat. Um, And then from there, I just kind of took a chance on myself. I made it to the national level in two years with a lot of hard work and good opportunities along the way. And then um, was at NHL Network, MLB Network, uh, worked for Blackhawks for a little bit, did Big Ten Network, um, I've bounced a little, all over the place, NBC Sports Chicago, um, Dallas Stars, <laughs> where haven't I been? Where on one of my best, Texas Rangers, the, the, the World Series winners, I've been doing that, that the last couple of years. So my start was kind of unconventional. It was like I just had to be very um, bold and a little bit ballsy. Like I, my boss originally at Big Ten Network told me no. They're like, sorry, role's full. We don't, we don't need any more analysts. And I was like, can I just come in for an audition? Because if I suck at this, let's save each other time because I don't want to waste any more of my years doing something that I might not ever, you know, turn into anything. And then yeah. drove five hours, got there, and here we are. I didn't answer the pickleball like- part, though. This is like the American dream. You got to write a book about this. I know. I I told Jimmy off the pod, I was selling freight to truck drivers in my first sales job. And I was like this. You were selling what? Freight. I was selling freight to truck drivers when I moved to Chicago. I know. That's a career change. Yeah. And then I went from that to medical device sales. This is where I was like, not sure what I wanted to do was doing a little bit of the like analyst work on Big Ten Network. Still like a pretty big role for me because I was like, oh, it's national TV. Like, this is great. And I love college volleyball still, but um, yeah. So pickleball, speaking of the American dream, so COVID hit, right? So I have I have this 12-year resume now of all this sports broadcasting I've been doing. I've covered college football, National Hockey League, MLB, college volleyball, you name it, lacrosse, I've done a lot. And then I lost a lot of it during COVID. Like I'm freelance for the most part in the majority of my career. I've been like contracted per gig basically. So that's kind of like a behind the scenes thing most people don't know. So all my contracted gigs for COVID that year when it all hit all of us, gone. So every bit of money, stability, everything, lost it all. So I gave up my apartment in Chicago Moved to Florida with my parents' house at age 30. It was kind of embarrassing. And I was like, hang on. How do I, how, do I even want to do sports broadcast anymore? Because there's so much stuff behind the scenes. I was just kind of over it. Like, I can't tell you how yeah. many meetings I've had with executives where it's like, your eyebrows too far in this way. You're not wearing the right outfit. There's just so much stuff that I was like, this is kind of annoying. Maybe I'm ready to be done. Like, I don't know. 
was kind of soul searching in that time. And then pickleball was the only thing we could do down in COVID. And I discovered it back in 2004 in gym class. And I was like, amazing. My parents, like little neighborhood had, had four courts. I was like, this is amazing. So I was playing it every day. And then I started listening to the broadcast and I was like, ooh, I think I can help them. Like I've been doing this for 10 years and I'm listening to the broadcast. It just sounded very unprofessional to me and no offense to anyone had that had done it was in the it, past, but I was who like, was on it? Who was, was on the was broadcast? A girl named Laura. <laughs> <laughs> who was on the broadcast at the time? I don't know. I don't really remember. We'll exactly. have to go back. Was it four years four ago? Year. Was it, Dave? it wasn't Dave Fleming though? No, it was not Dave. I did not hear Dave. Let's it's see. just to Scott me, Golden like there were random people. I don't even know if they still do it, but it was just like Scott. a bunch of bros in the booth, like yucking it up. Like, oh, yeah, it was and talking through Scott every Golden. point. It was Scott Golden. Um, Scott Golden's kind of a tool. That makes sense. <laughs> I don't know. And he's, I feel bad. I mean, me. it, it just like, it wasn't polished, right? Like, so my ears maybe are different from an average pickleball fan. Like to me, it's annoying to listen to a broadcast where it's the, where there's zero structure or, you know, the, yeah, don't don't ever listen to me comment, st- commentate on grandstand. Man. Have you heard Jimmy commentate? He's not I haven't listened there. to Jimmy yet because every time don't. Jimmy's on, I've been on. So don't don't listen. It's just like a bunch of bros in the booth. I can't wait to work with Jimmy one day on the broadcast. Let's. Make All right, so we got a question for you: Is what is your skill level in pickleball? Ooh, good question. I play. I hit with Connor Garnett a little bit in Arizona, and he was like. Ee- Four five. I'm playing in a couple of five zero tournaments coming up, so I guess we could gauge from that. So I don't do you know have two kids is. then, or three? What? <laughs> do you have two kids or three? <laughs> I have zero. So again, I haven't even peaked yet. So you still I've got have a dog potential. though. Does that count? <laughs> All right, <laughs> should we get right into it? So we yeah, just came so, back from the Mesa tournament. Yeah. So Mesa tournament, Mesa, the biggest thing that happened at Mesa. Yeah. That kind of overshadowed everything was they. PPA essentially what, what people don't understand is PPA on grandstand court and on some of these other side courts, they essentially, I don't want to say they get volunteers, but they get volunteers. They try to get pros. They try to get, but they're definitely untrained commentators for the most part. Right. Guys like me, I've done it. Um, I did it with Tyler. I did it with Jay DeVillier. And so they ended up getting Jim Kloss, the uh-huh. smartest self-proclaimed smartest man in pickleball. <laughs> And they and Jim brought in what was her name? Laura, Laura Fenton Covanda. Laura Fenton Covanda. But back up one one tournament and Jim actually brought her out to the previous tournament at yeah. Desert Ridge. So which she a lot a, of people didn't realize who it was. Um, she yeah. made a lot of comments that a lot of people thought were uh, Yeah, so back in Desert Ridge, yeah. she made that's where she made her first initial comment about referees essentially needing eye tests and age limits. <laughs> Um, and so you can't laugh by the yeah. way. You, are you saying you agree? Yeah, with are this? you agree with that? I'm sorry. I just didn't. You're I was, complicit. You're just, this just it. This is news to me. I, you're breaking yeah. this. So to that's me where the, she made her I, first comment. And then that was also where like Riley Newman and Jackie Kawamoto were playing. And we all know Jim Klaus's infatuation with Riley. Like he would leave his wife tomorrow for Riley. <laughs> and so they were lighting up Jackie even though Riley was just as much at fault for that loss, they were just spending the whole match lighting up Jackie. And so the whole thing just felt a little bit off and unprofessional. And then yeah. Mesa, they bring him back. Uh-huh. And in Mesa, she essentially made a lot of comments. And this was on center court. And this was on center court. Cause I guess what you get that you got the day off. What's going on with that? They, we just, I mean, tennis channel is who employs me. So whatever okay. deal PPA and tennis channel have together, we, I think for now they've made an adjustment for North Carolina coming up. I think we're on Wednesday now, but this one for North Carolina reason, or Minnesota. What's that? North Carolina or Minnesota? North Carolina, because it's a cut in North Carolina. Oh, okay. Sorry, gotcha. yeah, the because next progression right. draw. So they still, I think this. I don't. I wasn't a part of the discussions, but I think for this one they wanted to air the championship court matches still on Wednesday. I don't know what the, I'm, I'm sure maybe it was a budget thing. I'm not sure what the situation yeah. was there, but we were not contracted yeah. until Thursday so, to start. But the good news is because of that, we ended up getting Klaus and <laughs> his friend. And she basically made, she made a lot of crazy comments. She made a lot of interesting things, said things. But one of the things that she said was that women that have babies, if you have one baby, you're okay. You're right. actually better. You're better. Better. If you have one, but then if you have multiple, then your skills start to diminish? Start to de- decrease. Decrease? Um, what was the exact verbiage? 
That's what I want to well, know. Listen, Somebody I said would, it came from like a study or something. It's funnier if you misquote people. <laughs> I don't remember the exact verbiage. <laughs> I just know that she said she cited a study. And yeah, it starts to decrease. Now, there's a lot of moms on the pickleball tour uh-huh. on the, that play in the PPA. There's actually a lot of moms. I mean, Elise Jones travels with her kid. Yeah. Right? Brooke Buckner just had I know. Freaking Brooke is in Imagine the semis against two. her quarters against Anna Lee. Like, yeah. I mean. So as a professional and you start hearing these things, like what's your, re- just what's your initial reaction to this? I mean, my initial reaction was. I think you're the one, Jimmy, that told me that because I was listening throughout the day and then I, I must have missed that comment, but I apparently almost got ambushed for it the next day. I was like, it wasn't me. I think yeah, what, hey, wait, yeah, let's go back to that. What happened to that story? So you were you were up at the booth and someone tried to come after you in the booth? Yeah, like because the Thursday after, because apparently every female on the mic is the same person, essentially. I'm like, hang on. First of all, my voice is like eight octaves lower than whoever was on. Second of all, <laughs> I would never, ever, ever in a million years that third of all so apparently it was like a family member of i think it was christine trefanovich i believe i i don't Uh know who that's what somebody told me i I don't know who the woman was it was a family member that and rightly so she was pissed off at whatever was said in the broadcast and she was she thank god our audio guy was there she was trying to run up to the booth and get a hold of me because like i need to talk to that girl (laughs) whatever and i was like they, I didn't even know. I'm like, la, la, la. Good thing I wasn't like running down to go to the bathroom. Because by the way, we don't have time to pee during these broadcasts, which people don't know. But um, <laughs> anyways, my audio guy was like, did you see the woman that was trying to come after you? And I was like, no. Like, what do you mean? He was like, yeah, she almost bulldozed me to get to you. Anyways, so yeah, I almost took the better end of that. But I'm like, I, you know, here's my reaction to it. Initially, I'm like, oh my God. Like, yes, as a professional, as somebody that's been doing this for 12 years, that does bother me because it makes the rest of us, especially women, like it kind of, it kind of takes a, you know, I don't know what the right verbiage is. I'm trying to be as politically correct as possible because no, listen, need, that's the best part about our show. You don't need to. What's that? You can't get canceled. Apparently. <laughs> I, I, me or Jim? anybody on the show. Yeah. yeah. Oh, okay. You, well, you well, come on the good. show. You can't get canceled. Me, me sh- I'm uncancelable at this point. So <laughs> just say whatever you want. <laughs> You're ca- I'm un- I don't know about that, but that's, <laughs> we've all said stupid stuff on air. That I'll just put. I, I will give her the benefit of the doubt to to assume that maybe. Have she you didn't cited studies it. when you're saying those things? What? So when she made those comments, she was citing studies, okay, and so yeah. she was saying that in this study, uh, the results were X and X. I just don't get why that would be a relevant part of the broadcast, <laughs> like. Why is that what we're focusing on? If anything, like let's reference like a conversation you had with somebody. Like let's bring in my estimation of the situation. Like I always try to pump up the moms on tour because I think it's amazing that they're doing. Tyler, you know, you have kids. They're doing the hardest job in the world at home. In my opinion, outside of careers and everything, like you're keeping a human, another human alive. On top of that, managing a pro career. Like even if you're having an off day, that's freaking amazing. So that's my opinion on it. And to me, my job as a broadcaster in the play-by-play scene, I want to explain the template too. Thank you for giving me my soapbox. I get so annoyed when people don't grasp the like structure of a television broadcast and it's like it. the old way of pickleball, whatever. So in that role, if, if Jim is play-by-play, I don't know if that's established in that partnership or not. And if she's the color analyst, would that be mm, accurate? I mean, I think Jim was more of like dead weight and she was more of like a paperweight, but keep going. Okay. So in that scenario, a more relevant piece of information would be like, hey, I chatted with Christine ahead of the match. She said X, Y, Z. You know, like talk to players, bring... Like Wait, that, that's just not doing crazy? anything for you, for the broadcast, for anyone. I don't agree with it, obviously, for many reasons, but I can't imagine the response I would have gotten from my Fox bosses, from my Big Ten Network bosses, from my ESPN bosses, like the executives that I have met with face to face in the MLB network. Like if that were said on a national level, like you're done for but, a comment like that. Yeah. Like, but this is why this is why the internet is undefeated. Yeah. They found a video of Christine of Trifonovich playing this Laura lady eight and a half months pregnant in 2016 U.S. No. Open and beating her while she was eight and a half months pregnant. Wow. 
So maybe there's still like some bitter feelings still there. Or, the irony. But I don't know. Christine took I just don't it too. I'm she like, that just, like, if it's not going to add to the moment or the, like, why? Like, I don't know. Yeah. I don't know what that, what but the why motivation not, Why not was. bring up that story? Why not be like, hey, I actually have a history with Christine. We played together. Right. And you know what was amazing is she was pregnant and, you know, actually was able to beat me at the U.S. Open. Like, And maybe she was trying to justify her career trajectory or something. I don't know if she's had more than. Yeah. Or maybe she was better than her when she was pregnant with one kid, but then when she had the second, that's when it went downhill. I don't know. And I, you know what? Like, I'm not going to shame anyone for anything. Cause I get it. Like I, you know, but my advice would be to, uh, filter yourself a little bit more on air. And to be fair, pickleball has been brought up in the old way of doing things where it's just like throw two people in and let them fly. And there's no structure. There's no like, um, you know, education before, like anyone that I work with in the booth, like I try to just give them as much information as I know in a small amount of time of like, okay, I've sat in your seat before. Here's how it works. Like the play by play. And this is not a way, I mean, Dave is awesome cause he can do both, but he, he will notice when he's working with somebody like Adam or another analyst, he steps more into the play by play seat. So let's think about this and take everybody to, to school here for a moment. NFL. Love Golf. This. What's your favorite sport, Tyler? What What do you love to watch? Basketball, NBA. Okay. Uh, yeah. Okay. Uh, I don't know NBA announcers as well. Shoot. You You ruined my. What about NFL? Do you watch Do you watch Joe Buck? I don't Joy, watch Joy, NFL. NFL. Let's go. Tennis let's go. Jim Nance and Tony Romo. Jim right? Nance and Tony Romo. Perfect. All right. NFL Sunday. You're listening to a broadcast. You're not hearing Jim Nance breaking down why X player ran the blitz on X play or who shot the gap in that moment. Like. He is explaining what happened, and then t- Tony Romo is jumping in and is actually bringing color and analysis to the moment because Tony played in the NFL. That's his role. He's the His job is to bring education to something we don't know. The play-by-play's role is to be the traffic cop. So, like, what people don't know behind the scenes is we have headsets on, obviously. We have direction coming in our ear from producers and there are things changing left and right and you're navigating to and from break and how do you segue from this comment to that comment and you're listening to your analysts and trying to ask the right questions so that the viewer is getting the right kind of information so it's like it can be my job is to make my analysts look good as the play-by-play person so it's like if you're thinking about it Jim Nance is outlining the play Patrick Mahomes goes for the Hail Mary to Travis Kelsey in the end zone and he gives it and then the analyst takes it and runs with it and then breaks down the replay and it gives us like the behind the scenes knowledge that we wouldn't have otherwise had. Now, that can be different, like I said, when Dave's in the booth with somebody like Adam, for example. Dave is more of that, bring us back from break, set up Adam. Why would that player be doing that? Adam has recent relevant knowledge of all these pros. He played against them. So that's Adam's role. Adam should be the star of the show. We're just kind of like the setup guys. And it really drives me nuts when people, I'm like, I get trolled, whatever, I don't care. There's so much positivity too, but like the trolls, I'm like, at least get it right. Like, I don't care if you don't like me or my style or my voice or my hair or whatever the frick you don't like, but like, don't nitpick the structure of a broadcast because that's how it works in every sport. That's so annoying. I don't know. Anyways, I try to defer to like, I always try to defer to my analysts. I try to ask good questions. I try to not talk. Like, you'll hear me lay out sometimes for four points at a time and I'm not perfect at it and I'm not saying I'm the best ever, but like. I mean, I think I'm the longest tenured broadcast person, in, like with the PPA or with pickleball, and that was one of the reasons I wanted to do pickleball because I love it. It brings me joy, but I'm also like, I think if you compare our broadcast now to what it is, to what it was four years ago, I think you'd be well, very Scott happy Golden with the one. strides that we've taken because it used to be hard to listen to, but maybe that was just my opinion. So okay, thank okay. you, thank you for coming to my TED talk. Yes, love it. Goodbye. Thank you for coming to. Did, was that informative? Was that talk. informative? Did you get that? Yes, th- okay. yes. I think that's important. So, so when you have these amateurs that come on, I mean, they one, they obviously they don't have a lot of structure. They don't know how these things work. Right. Right. They don't know whose role is what. But I have gone on there, and Dave has given me two rules. Okay, and his two rules are one: don't talk during the point. Uh huh. And two, don't swear. Okay. Those are the rules that Dave always gives me. Um, <laughs> but what do you think about people that say that like pickleball is, I mean, it's, it's, it is it is hard, hard to commentate, to commentate on pickleball, pickleball because, because 
the points, points. there's not a lot of time between points, number one. Yeah. And so you've so got to break, break down, down that, that point, point or talk about that point, that point without, without talking, talking during, during the point. point. Yeah. Right? right? Like, like mm-hmm. and, so and so how do we how make that more exciting, I guess, from, from your perspective? Yeah, that's a really good question. I used to deal with the same thing with Q10 Park trolling me, but the uh, volleyball, same concept. Like when I was in the analyst seat for volleyball, you have two seconds to explain it. But if you're economical with your words and you're thinking ahead of the point, like what I usually try to do as an, in the analyst seat of like, okay, I'm watching everything throughout that point. And if I see something that the average viewer wouldn't pick up, that's what I'm bookmarking in my mind. So if the point ends and I'm like, okay, I want to go back to that. And once the broadcast starts to evolve too, and we can hit talk back and be like, save that replay. I want to break down that play. Like we're not quite there yet with our production, which I think it will get there eventually. But I think it's finding the educational moments as the analyst and having the jurisdiction with your partner to be like, like I always tell my analysts, if you have something to say that's like you want to point out, just tap me and I'll, you take it. You know what I mean? Like yeah. sometimes it doesn't require a comment after every single point, but I think the, the big key there is being economical. And if there's something that you can explain, like if you can answer how, why, um, what caused, you know, a certain trajectory of a point or um, certain teams or whatever in certain scenarios to take over in whatever way, like that's where Tyler could come in and if Tyler does a broadcast, he could say, I'm actually, like I could call out what happened in the, the the aftermath of the play and Tyler could take that and say, well, actually, you know what set up that point was, you know, a couple of dings ago, Ben did this and pulled JW out to this part of the court. And then he did this and you can fit that in, in a matter of five seconds. No, 10 seconds, I think. Cause usually they give you replays and that's where the analyst should really shine. Cause once you see a replay, they're showing you something, some part of the point Like you should be in the teaching mindset. And that's why I feel like, the analyst should be the one shining the most in a broadcast because you're the expert. Like we are looking to you for information and Jimmy, you watch more pickleball than anyone. Like, so you just constantly racking your brain around the questions, how, why, what caused that? So you can make it a teachable moment. I think that makes it more interesting to talk about as the play by play, but then also for the viewer back home to be like, huh, I didn't know that. And I'm going to apply that to my game now. So I think that's, that's the key there, but you have to, it's an art. Like you have to learn how to use your words in a more condensed amount of, yeah. you know, you got economical with your words, I guess is the best way to say it. Same with asking questions. Oh, I have so many pet peeves about the way people ask questions that are untrained. We can get to that whenever. Well, you're, <laughs> you're getting, getting that right, right now. now. Okay. Uh, <laughs> question for you. Uh, what are your thoughts? So PPA this year has kind of transitioned into progression draws tournaments. Mm-hmm. So where they play uh, one round each day of each event. What are your thoughts on that as a commentator? Oh my God, I love it. I love it because as the sport grows, right? Like we don't have a ton of information on you guys. Like you've been around for a while, Tyler. Like we can access you pretty easily. But some like of these- You don't have an SID, right? No. Like so to speak. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So sometimes like that's the hardest part, especially when you're on the morning shift. When you have uh, like a- Case and Campbell, for example, a great example, like somebody that soared through the draw. Like how would I have information handy on a guy unless I've played with him or, you know, unless- I've really been like studying all sorts. Like there's no way to really get a grasp on the players unless you already have a name to yourself. Right. So, um, the progression draws give us so much more leeway with preparation. Like I can reach out if I know Tyler's matches on center, I can try and find him before a match. I can reach out to Jimmy say, Hey, do you know anything about X, Y, Z, this player? I have nothing on him. And half the time these people don't even have Instagrams where it's like, there's notable information. So we're, completely self-reliant on like our own due diligence. And that's something I'm trying to even expand this year because the better you have those relationships with those players, the better we can do our jobs. And I think the players should start using us as their mouthpieces. Like you guys are building up your brands. You're doing business stuff like outside of the sport. Use the media to your advantage. Like if there's something going on in your world, your life or whatever, or sponsorship, anything you want out there, like, I wish more players would come to us with information. Or if you're an unknown person, you know you're coming up on center, shoot an Instagram message or a text or something. Like I wish there was a channel of communication that could happen. So it's because half the time we're like, like a, line. but yes, sorry. I love the progression. What, what if they did something like a, like PPA did something like a survey for all the players? I think they're going to do They're working towards doing that. I think Dave told Yeah, me that. they do those occasionally. Because I just think that like if they have a survey and like the players just fill out some sort of bio about themselves that 
they're able to give to you guys so you have access to it. Because like you said, there's no sports information director. Yeah. There's nobody feeding you stuff. I mean, you've texted me about players and been like, hey, yeah, you know, like if you know anything. And I've, I've, you know, even when I, the few times I've commentated, I've literally been Googling yeah. players like, you know. Sometimes you don't even know what they look like. Out. Where but... do they play in college? <laughs> Where do they do in tennis? Yeah, like it's crazy. Yeah, I'm like, who, who, which one is which? Like who, like when yeah. there's not a progression draw, I'm like, I don't even, I've never seen these people in my life. I've never heard of them. Like, w- yeah. which, which guy and, is, And sometimes you know? you'll, you'll Google them and there's no picture. Yes. And yeah. you'll get like USTA ranked 1,236. They went one and one and that's it. Yeah. And you're like, this tells me nothing. This I gives know. me no info. I, I don't know. even know where this person's from. I don't know how old they are. Like, it's crazy. When they started, where they found the sport. Like, yeah. yeah. And those are things yeah. I think that will start to get buttoned up as we, I mean, it's, it's still a startup. Let's be honest. Like they're, it's. And I came from the hockey, MLB, all that stuff. Like, this stuff is spoon-fed to you. Like, you have every stat you need on every single player. You have their bio notes. You have access. You have, like, there's a whole PR team designated to just the information side of it. So that's definitely a challenge. I don't think people realize coming into it is bridging that gap will be super helpful in the future to have more interesting talking points and to ask the right questions in the interviews and um so as we continue to grow, but it's a fun challenge, right? So it's like, okay, well, and if you cover enough pickleball, you'll eventually start seeing pretty common names. But the early parts of the draw are tough because there are some no-namers that are emerging or just came out of nowhere, you know, so it's it's tough. Do, do you have a favorite person to interview after a match? Ooh, good question. Um... I really like Tyson McGuffin because he gives, he actually answers the question insightfully. Friend of the show. That's our favorite guy. <laughs> I know. Jimmy's I don't care. Guy. I don't care that you, I don't care where you guys stand on that. This is, see, I'm honest too. I'm a straight shooter. Big friend I'm of the show. I'm a straight shooter. I'll straight we shoot love it. Big fan of the show. As long as you have a conversation with my face, I don't care if I get called out, but like, we're, let's talk we're about going it. to get him on the show. We're going we to actually have him do, sit right here. We actually here. do want to have him come on. What's that? Good. Uh, we should. actually, we really do. Get the we man love a mic. Have, let him defend do it himself. Like this. <laughs> I don't want to do it over Zoom. I want him in person. Okay. Uh, well, let, he's great for the sport. He really is. Like he, yeah, he gives good sure. answers. He doesn't shield information from us. Like he's entertaining. I, I, he's. I always know I'm going to get a pretty good sound bite out of Tyson. Like the worst yeah. as an interviewer is when you're like. Oh, good. I'm gonna go. I could literally in the hockey. They're the worst. Oh my god. I could tell you. I could tell you what a hockey player is going to tell me at the first intermission right now if you tell me what the situation is. But, <laughs> oh, yeah, good gaps. Take away time and space. And, uh, yeah, the boys did great out there. That was a really good uh, yeah, really good first period. I got to go out there and, you know, uh, yeah, just it. Anyways, so the worst is when you know, when you ask a question and you could literally ask them what they had for lunch that day and they're going to be like, uh, well, you know, it so- was just another uh, good uh, Pickleball, we really solid dinks, whatever. It's like, okay, obviously so, people uh, watch. Who's like, the, so who's you know? the worst? <laughs> yeah, and what'd you say? So who's the worst then? Oh, that you can't do me like that. Let's see, who's the worst? <laughs> hmm. Who, need, who, who needs, needs, do you, do you think, think that pro, pro how about this? I'm going to give you an out. Do you think pro pickleball players need media training? Yeah, 100%. I'm like, I literally, I've said this so many times. I'm like, God, I wish I could just like, talk to them and give them my insight of like, this is the kind of question that's coming. Here's a way to like make something out of nothing. If a terrible interview question comes your way, here's a way to make it something that makes you look good because you're representing yourself in that moment. It's like, and it's nerve wracking, it's public speaking. So I think there are a lot of people that are not necessarily comfortable with that skill set, but at least if they know kind of what's coming and I can give them like the heads up of like, hey, as somebody that's been doing this for 12 years, here's what I would ask you in this moment. Um, I actually did a little bit of training with some players. I don't know if they wanted it out there publicly, but so I won't say their like, names. There's no but, way that there's that? no way Annalie has not had media training. Uh, honestly, I, I, for her age, Annalie does an excellent job, in my opinion, on well, handling I mean, she a has lot so of, much experience. Uh, Seventeen years she's old, so like polished, I couldn't speak But that's because she wins every single tournament. What's well, yeah. yeah? I mean, I I mean, she's going. And I think I want to say somebody, somebody on our production side gave her one tip on like looking at the cameras a different way. I mean, it's hard too with a headset. There's no human down there. You're like talking to a robot essentially. But um, I think she does a really good job at 17 years old. Like, what was I doing at 17? Nothing. Not talking in interviews after winning every single tournament in a pro sport. So, no, I think she's pretty good. I'll 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 say 
I would love for Ben and Colin to get more personality in their interviews. And I, they, I'm close with these guys. That so is a I personality. Think I can say it that's without as, them getting that's mad at me. as much as you get with those two. I, I like, and like this last one on, on the, well, it wasn't on a Fox broadcast. It was on the um, pickleball TV with Ben. There was a little personality in there, but you have to ask as the interviewer, you have to ask the right question. So to me, Ben's actually a pretty funny guy. Ben, I know, I know, he's so funny. Yeah. So if you ask it in a way where you like, I think can get more of a, I mean. If you give him a layup question, he's or a T ball, what is it? Give, give him a question on a T. He's going to say you know the right things. But if you kind of like, I think the last one I asked him about, it was like seven nothing, and he roared to the crowd or whatever, and then he gave a smile and like an actually engaging answer. But so I think that's also on the interviewer to ask better questions to get better answers out of their interview subjects. But they're they are both what, so funny. What, I'm like, give me that best? personality on air. Like, come on. That, that's my we had that's been, my we goal. had been on the pod and I think we got a lot out of him. Yeah. Yeah. He yeah, was he's he coming was up. Very he, was, he was eating his cereal. He literally no, he's eating salmon. He was eating salmon while he was talking to us, which was weird, but This is Ben? Yeah. <laughs> and he like Big his hair guy. was all disheveled. He looked like he just got out of bed. <laughs> and Are you surprised? but he was very engaging and he was actually funny and showed personality yes. and He's so funny. He's very witty yeah, and very so. funny. He's like a he's like an old man in a twenty four year old's body. <laughs> yes. Not, oh, he's very he, very old soul. He's sure. the oldest soul, oldest. Yeah. Yeah. So funny. Like he Everything. listens to Frank Sinatra and Tony Bennett and. Yes. Yeah. Watches Price is Right and yes. Jeopardy for sure. I'm like, I think you've like lived life before. It seems like yeah. you've been here before, Ben. He's just 100%. like an old soul. He plays bingo on Friday nights at four p.m. <laughs> Uh, do you have a preference for events, singles, doubles, or mixed doubles that you enjoy commentating? Yeah, women's doubles for sure. That's the most interesting. No offense, but men's doubles sometimes can be so boring with the dinking. It depends which style. Like you had a match with, uh, who was it in, in Dallas? It was Ignatowicz and had to be Tyson. And who were you playing with? You were with Hayden, I think, right? If I remember correctly. Uh, MLP? No, no, it was in Dallas, USA Nationals. I Me and James versus Ben Jones and Colin Jones, probably. Yeah. Where Colin got yes. hit and went down yes. for 20 minutes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's here. what it was. Oh, yep, gosh. yep, yep, yep. Um, yeah. That was fun because it, there was more. Oh, yeah, the, the, the timeout. Uh, <laughs> sorry, it's not funny. I'm glad he's okay. I just think it's <laughs> funny when funny. people. I'm sorry. I'm so bad. Like when people No, when fall. people get hurt, it's always funny as long as they're not like seriously injured. What? When people get hurt, it's always funny it's, as long as they're not like seriously injured. I am so bad about that. Like my first instinct, not with that situation. Somebody gets hit in the eye, I'm not laughing. But like if somebody falls and they're okay, I'm like the first person to laugh. Yeah. I'm also the first to laugh. Like did you see, did you, wait, did you call that match where you did yeah, Castillo did. fell in? Yeah. Just <laughs> against Anna Bright. Yeah. Just tumbles into the kitchen. Just like, oh. Yeah. It was funny. She was okay. So it's it was funny really now funny. that he's okay. <laughs> yeah. The way he went down was kind of funny. But we know he didn't I get it in the eye. Down, and like we he know he didn't shot. get hurt. He, he just was, was like, oh. He was like, isn't this, yeah, he was like, isn't this like where JFK got shot? I'm going to get sniped right here. Boom. He was like reenacting it. And then he laid there. <laughs> it was, okay. It's no, get well, it. I thought it was bad because I thought he got hit in the eye. And I'm like, wow, that's that's pretty serious. Yeah, but right. turns out it, it wasn't his eye. It was like his forehead or something like that, which is still serious, but it's not his eye. It, exactly. So, yeah, exactly. no, he, and he and laid okay. there. I, he, he laid out like on his eye. <laughs> yeah. That was I think he like started convulsing even like it was crazy. They brought out like the defibrillator and they were bringing him back to life. And then all of a sudden he stands up and he's like, it was crazy. It was nuts. It was like he was Wolverine. He healed so fast. He said, all right, so good. time's up. Yep. He's like 20 minutes. Oh, okay. I feel better. So good. So good. That was crazy. So, sorry. Hard right turn there. But uh, yeah. yeah, I think that that men's doubles match was more exciting to me because it was more like, I know, I get it. Like everybody's hands are too good. That's why we can't speed it up in men's. But like, I like a faster style. Like, a, I mean, uh, Did you do Tardio's matches this last week? I did the finals. I did not do the upset. Dave and Adam were on that one, I believe. So that was a fun one. Gotcha. How, how do they determine, Mish, how do they determine who does what? Like what's your schedule? Because... Yeah. Because sometimes Dave's not at a tournament or like now you have Kyle Kazuda yeah. in the booth. Yeah. So we haven't seen Hannah Johns in a while. Yeah. Like I what, think how is this yeah. figured out? The yeah. I, I think there's still tennis channels in charge of crewing the TV people that are on the, I don't know what, how else to put it, that are on the, like, not what we had this last weekend on the Wednesday, but on the like Thursday through Sunday. 
Um, as for partnerships, Dave and I always do championship Sunday for the most part. Like the there was a Sunday I did the pickleball slam um, instead of doing championship Sunday. So there are moments that um, either he or I won't be able to do it. But the the mindset behind it is it's easier to find a color analyst on site or to have the um, availability of somebody local like a Kyle that popped into the booth. So it's like Dave and I's roles are to do play by play. So having him and I separated makes it a little bit easier for new people to come in, if that makes sense. So I take one of the, Adam's not new, obviously, but if there is a situation where it's just Dave and I that are pretty consistent every single weekend, we'll split up the Thursday through Saturday, each work with an analyst. Dave will be in the play by play position, so to speak. And then um, we come back together on Championship Sunday. So I don't really know exactly the rhyme or reason behind it. I know there's, um, they see it, Tennis Channel sees it as like a host role and a color role. Like play-by-play -play okay. and analyst. So he and I are always hosting, and Dave can do both, like I said. Um, there will be some tournaments that he and I will be together, and then other tournaments we won't be. It's just kind of, also I think it's up can in I... the air too with, I think it's still being determined with this merger situation of what the 100% flow is going to be. So it's, we're kind of just like adjusting on the fly is is my estimation of the situation. But Can, can um, I get in the booth yeah, with the, you for the reason a behind it is Salt Lake? to have Dave and I on one shift at least at a time. Can, can, I, can I take Dave's spot for PPA Salt Lake? Sure. Oh, I don't know. Dave's spot, but you can work with me if you want. I, you have my yeah, permission. That's what I'm Unfortunately, saying. I'm not the decision me, maker. Me, but... and you, me and you, PPA Salt Lake. <laughs> you heard it Let's here make first. It happen. Back over to you, Bob. What is the process <laughs> like? I'm sure you're getting a ton of players um, that are wanting to begin a role in commentating. Mm -hmm. Do you have a bunch of people hitting you up, or what's that process like for people? For example, Jimmy, he doesn't play, but he's starting to commentate a little bit. Yeah. Like, what's the process for that? Yeah, like start to fit, like how to get in vault, how to get your foot in the vault. Yeah, role, like how to get good for example, Rob Cassidy, yeah. he used to commentate a little bit. People yeah. like him. Like, if he wanted to do a little bit more, what's his process? Um, yeah, well, I, I don't know who the right people to talk to in terms of getting the opportunities, but I think the best way to go about like that role and mastering that role is to watch other sports, watch how the color analyst gets into the broadcast, explain certain NBA, NFL, college football, whatever your sport is. Watch how the structure of the broadcast is executed because that's the same formula across all sports. So that's where I would start. Um, you know, I, I like working with new color people because I like to kind of give them the template of like, okay, I'm going to be the what person. I'm going to explain. I'm going to outline the sketch of what's happening. Your job is the how and the why. Like, you're the expert. So, like, if there are talking points ahead of the match, like, I would tell my color analyst to say, okay, pick three things you're looking for on both sides. And then during a break, there's often not time to do that. Um, so one, I would tell them to watch other national network broadcasts just to see what that role looks like and then mimic that with pickleball. Um, two, when you have an opportunity to do a grandstand, do it, but then also try and be a little more professional, like in terms of what a TV broadcast. Hey, if you say something pretty wild, people yeah. will recognize your name and then you can Kind of get a little that's bit clout that way and then go on from there. Yeah, that's there true. Or get tam famous on TikTok or something. I've, I've seen I mean, that's kind of how Jimmy got yeah. so famous. He started saying a lot of crazy, wild things. And then crazy his wild, name just I, blew up. I yeah. started being honest. Yeah, well, that's <laughs> true. Yeah, you're a great example. And then you're like, you're an entertaining person too. So like there's, there's definitely a place for that also. I don't want to sound like it's like only pro players can play, but like that's just going to be a different broadcast if it's you and... Tyler breaking down a match, which is great. Like there's different flavors to every broadcaster yeah. or whatever type of thing. Like my style is going to be different than your style, but who, um, yeah. who's a pro player right now that you think, and maybe you've heard them on grants or whatever that you think could have a career in broadcasting. Uh, like I think maybe Colin, Colin Johns is Colin, known for yeah, that. Leah that Jansen does well. Yeah. I didn't that ask was, you Tyler. I asked I I'm, at, Colin, I'm um, answering for her. <laughs> yeah. I worked with Colin a couple of times last year. I would work with Colin on his, like, see, I'm, like, so anal. Like, I like to be, I like to coach people on the broadcast side. Like, I like to, because, I'm, I don't know, like, I'm, like, take it or leave it. If you want this advice, great. If you don't, no biggie. But, like, here are some things that I've noticed that I've gotten feedback on of, like, do this, this, and this. Like, the delivery with a lot of these pros is just, like, a little flat. 
Like they're very monotone and like um, well, that's their, their insight's amazing. So it's like, okay, let's find a way to deliver this in a way that's like, let's add some inflection. Let's add some like, you know, like, Ugh. but that's me. That's like my, that's where the broadcast side of me is like, gets a little like uptight. Like I think people know when they work with me, I have a little bit of like high standards of like, okay, this is what I expect. This is what I want to see you do, whatever. Or if somebody's doing something that I'm like, Ugh, that's cringy. Like, don't do that. I'll, I'll just say it. I'll be like, try and do it this way instead of that. But um, I don't even know what we're talking about. See, here I go again. Ugh, you got to keep me on a freaking leash over pros here. Pros that you would like to or that. Oh. Yeah, pros you think that would do well like as yeah. an, anal- an analyst role. Well, Colin and Ben, I, I mean, the insight that Ben would have on these matches, like he sees the game at such a different level. I think Tyler would be good. I think any, I, any of these high-level pros would be um, pretty good at it with the insight that they have. It's just a matter of polishing it for the TV side of things, like it's not the knowledge that they don't, they wouldn't have. It would be the like delivery and the um, when to really interject and like the small things. Like, like for example, this last weekend, I told one of my guys, I was like, "Don't say." As we see here on the screen on the replay, like, don't say that. Just get to the analysis. That'll save you what you were talking about with the time. Like, just say, watch the way that Ben leans into the blah, blah, blah. like just start your analysis like don't add extra words so and if you don't have anything good to offer to the broadcast just don't say it and sometimes I'm guilty of that too like I'll say something I'm like I probably could have not said that and it would have been fine so yeah but I think is there, is I, I'm excited I hope that happens I hope more pros in your 12 in us. your 12 year career Mish is there anything that you've said that you regret like <laughs> that you were like oh shit do you want to hear my most embarrassing story I yes, don't know if I should air 100%. it out of this. <laughs> I had a word slip. I had a moments. word slip once. <laughs> I'm not gonna say which network. I'm not gonna say which sport. But it wasn't recent. It was a really long time ago. Uh, you won't be able to find it. But there was. <laughs> I accidentally said "gaping ass" once <laughs> when describing um, an athlete. And I was trying to say gaping absence. Like, I would never say that in a conversation. So why am I trying to say that in a broadcast? <laughs> so, like, word. the things. Yeah. So, I mean, it wasn't about her, you know, career based on how many kids Oh, it was a female had, athlete. It was, it was an accident. Was and she was such a tiny girl, like, didn't have a gaping ass. But I said it, and I literally. What does that even mean? Explain that to us. Okay. Well, I don't think so we know she what was means. out with injury for like a significant amount of time, it's pretty funny. and it was a it was a big it was a big absence, <laughs> and I for some reason chose the word gaping, absence, and instead of saying absence, I said gaping ass, and then nobody caught me for it. I didn't get trolled for it or whatever. And my producer at so I, I was in the analyst seat at that time, and my play by play guy was like. He just paused and he looked at me. He was like, "Did you just say?" But I and I was like, "Did you hear it? Did I say that? Did you hear it? Did you? Did I say ass? Did I hear? Did Did you hear it the same way? But they were dying, dying. Everybody was dying. I was so embarrassed. I thought I was gonna get canceled. I was like, "Oh my god, this girl's gonna think I called her that she has a gaping ass and she, she doesn't." And anyways, so yeah, that's regrettable. Um, my first time ever going on air was terrible. I mean, we've all had moments like that. That's why it's so funny. I think everyone everyone thinks they are an expert at pickleball because everyone plays it. And they also think that they're that everyone thinks that they can do commentating. And Jimmy, you can speak to how like I would love to know from you what's your biggest mis what was your biggest misconception before doing some on air stuff to what it actually is like that was kind of like a well yeah, this mean, is harder than I thought. Yeah, it's way harder. It's way harder than it looks for sure. And it, I think the hardest thing is to not repeat yourself yeah. with like the same adjectives over and over and over again. I do that sometimes too. Yeah. Happens. Yeah. Like it's hard. Because, and, and like, there's obviously there's commentators out there that have their signature lines, but they save those, right? Yeah. We're, we're, we're saving those, but like, it's hard to, I mean, pickleball, look at the end of the day, like, oh, there's a dink, a dink, a speed up, a put away. Yeah, I know. Right. Right. That's it. You have to make that exciting and you have to yeah. like not use the same things over and over. Yeah. And it's, it's way harder than it looks. And like you said, it's hard for me to like condense everything into like those five seconds between points Yeah. or like, so me and Ireland who, you know, works for the PPA, we yeah. commentated a match with Tyler. It was Tyler and James Ignatowicz against Rafa Hewitt and Connor Garnett in Dallas. Mm-hmm. 
And it was one of the most exciting matches I've ever seen. Oh, I gotta watch it. And like it went viral. It's actually gone viral on TikTok. Some of their points. It's got like millions of views. Really? And all you hear in the is like when the point ends is Ireland and I go, wow. <laughs> Sometimes like, that's okay oh my though. Gosh. Like so literally one of the best points of 2023, and we're like, wow, because we didn't even know what to say. It was like it was like the first time we'd ever done it. It was this insane point, but it was so amazing. We were just like in awe. Yeah. And I'm like, what a total like this should have been on championship court with you and Dave or you or Adam or whoever, because that's how amazing this match was. And you have her and I sitting there on this side table watching from a screen, barely able to see it. We're like, wow. That's wow. Honestly, though, <laughs> tennis channel at least, and covering tennis a little bit too uh, with play by play, they're really big on silence. Like they're like, just lay out. I'm like, just don't talk at all. They're like, let the play do the talking. So I actually think that's okay too in pickleball. Yeah. It's like you're never gonna make everybody happy too. Like sometimes yeah, that is a speechless sure. point. Like that's something that like words yeah, it, might it, even it take was, away like, from it. You know? Yeah, for sure. sure. But it was just I don't know. I didn't even know what to say. Like, it was <laughs> unbelievable. I mean, it did. It spoke for itself. But we were like. I go, and I said at first that I was like, wow. And then she's like, wow. And, I, and then afterwards I thought, this is like one of the best points of the year. And we're sitting here like just sounding like it, you know. That's so funny. Know. It is hard to think um, of stuff on the fly. It is very like. Do you have any pet peeves oh, yeah. when listening to commentators oh, uh, in Pickleball? So many. I say this are, knowing that I'm not perfect. But I hate. And Adam Stone will be able to walk you through everything that I that I nitpick because I hate it. I can't say how people do it. He's like, don't ask a question starting with tell me about. She's going to get on you. He doesn't sound like that, but that's kind of what I, Anyways, I hate, hate, hate when people start a question. And this is, this is on like a handbook. I got like a Fox ESPN like handbook of like ways to ask questions and tell stories and all that stuff. So she like, also has an Emmy, by the way. <laughs> I do have an Emmy. And these people still troll me. I'm like, hey, it, this, this is unbelievable. Like, you can, you can comment on whatever you want, but like, I do know what I'm doing. I'm, but like, screw you. Anyways, you know, like, Ben Lynn, let's have an in-person conversation. Ben Lynn. Here's my yeah. preview. All this guy is all over the place. I'm like, yeah, the bullies hey, out bro, there in the sport. Take your fanny pack and go home. Like. Get, get your fanny pack and your freaking Air Maxes or whatever those shoes are called and go home or have an in-person conversation. I'm like, man up. I, the, the amount of men that would not have this conversation and women, I got that women too. I'm like, oh, sorry, that was not the question. Um, what were we talking about? <laughs> pet peeves. The trolls oh, are one peeves. of your pet peeves. Um, I hate when people start a question with, tell me about, talk to me about, that's not a question. I hate that. I can't stand. So what would you say instead of that? Can you break you down? Say, uh, like, give me an, give me an example and I'll tell you how I'd ask the question. Like, give me a point example of what just happened. Like who's like, what? What, um, tell, tell me about your childhood. Okay. Uh, tell me about your childhood. What is it about your upbringing that set the tone to where you are in your life now? Cause that that's is so an actual though. question. Oh, like that's then though. you can, you like that. Tell me about, it's not a question and it's journalistically incorrect. So like, is it the worst thing in the world? Probably not. If you're saying, tell me about your childhood, that's like, Okay. Maybe whatever, but if it's about a match, like, tell me about your, mom. your dinking at the kitchen. <laughs> it's like, like, where do you go with that? Like, what yeah, was yeah, it about your yeah. dinking that set you up for success? And leave yeah. it at that. Like seven words or less yeah. if you can. Yeah. And I'm not like, good at this either sometimes. Yeah. Or like break down how your parents beating you from nine to 14 <laughs> yeah. made you the man you are today. Or if we're talking to trolls, who hurt you as a child that you are <laughs> yes. not projecting this onto me on social media, some innocent lady that's just trying to live her life in pickleball with all Listen, of you people. Like, they haven't been hugged enough. They were not <laughs> hugged enough. Ben Lynn has not been hugged enough. Freaking Ben Lynn. Who's the other one? There's one of them. I went in the chat section one time and I was like, oh God, oh, do I am never going back. It's the, when they the tweet chats me directly in the comments, that really pisses me off. I'm chats like, in the comments are like literally the worst people. There's literally, I'm like, I want to know where these people come from. Like I need to, like the psychology behind these people doesn't make sense. The like, gutter. First of all, get the out of your mom's They have nothing better to do. They clearly don't have jobs because they're watching it two o'clock on a Wednesday. 
exactly, exactly, exactly. There's, There's a lot of people that don't have jobs. They, they're always I like, mean, oh, me, she's the worst. Oh, she doesn't know. She doesn't know pickleball. I'm like, what is there to know about pickleball? I'm sorry. Wait a second. I'm sorry. It's not that advanced stra- of a strategy sport. Like Tyler, you can back me up on this. There are like nuances. You're going to get where, roasted right now for that. How can you not know pickleball? Like, also, I've been playing since 2005. Like, okay. Like, it's just like... Gym class. Mish used to play in gym class. I what? Yeah, I used to play in gym class. I was like sweaty. I had like a whole sweat band. I was like on championship court with the boys. King of the court, by the way, in gym <laughs> class. I used to beat the boys in badminton and pickleball. Big it. Big in deal. OG. Not to mention. Hmm? Well, at least maybe Laura will get these trolls off my back now that... Yeah, they can I'm go like, after you could have now. it worse. You could have it worse. We could be talking about children and declining careers. Okay, <laughs> not to Imagine mention if a male commentator said that though. Those like, comments, like, oh, would, that would have been what, yeah. if that would have been worse. If, if Adam said Stone that. made those comments, not to put words in his mouth, because his wife just had a beautiful baby, he, he would not be back, back this week. No, I'd assume. No. I don't think so. No, I think it'd be way worse for a guy to say it. I, I mean, the fact I that she played give credit. pregnant gives her, I guess, a little bit. It's not like yeah. she's. But, I don't know. But I think we do need to give a little bit of credit to the PPA for acting so swiftly on it. I felt like Connor was all over it on yeah. every forum. Well, and he, has he kids like too. removed her, got rid of her. Yeah. But, but I don't know if you did. You see her, her apology? apology? No, I didn't. What did it say? Well, well it, was it was 18, 18 pages, pages long, long, number one. one. But then but it, it said. said she said, she, said she, she was qualified right? and she started she laying out all the reasons she was qualified to say the things she did. And one of the things she said, and I swear on everything, she said, I was the, a free throw champion. I hit 96 out of 100 free throws. No. Yes. <laughs> well, 96 impressive. out of 100 is impressive. It's true. Like, I got to give her credit. <laughs> qualified. I mean, Check that's, mark. I mean, that's With Steph how many Curry. kids at the time? Zero? <laughs> yeah, exactly. I think she only had one because if she had a second, her career would have been ruined. <laughs> But, I don't understand. So she stopped at one. I don't understand. I but think you she just said own she it hit 96 say, I shouldn't have said it. I don't, e- even if it were true, but like clearly it's not. Brooke Buckner, perfect example. And like Johnny <laughs> yeah. gave me a little funny look when it was like one of the first things I said, but I'm like, I always talk about the moms and their kids. I try to, because it's like, she just had her baby literally two months ago and she's on championship court playing Emily Waters. Like that is impressive. Yeah. Like she just pushed a baby out of her and she's back up, you know? Wait, like, what did she, wait, what did she do? Brooke? I just, those, all those hand signals. I didn't Sorry. know what was going on over there. Very expressive talker. She had a baby. Is that how that works? She had a baby. I just learned about childbirth just now. I know. Have you, can you imagine you gentlemen giving birth to a baby? No. It sounds. Well, Tyler terrible. said on her last episode, he has such a high pain tolerance. It wouldn't phase him. Well, no way. Tolerance. You're lying. <laughs> I do have a high pain tolerance okay i'm sure you do but if you talk to any woman that's given birth they say it's the literally the worst pain in their entire life i guess i didn't expect to go here today but here we are uh anyways <laughs> Love it. this is this is what we do we go off the rails yeah um you're going to kill me i messed up my body so i have a doctor's appointment that i gotta get to we should probably wrap it up and it's been um, so oh, yeah, you we, do? we appreciate you coming on is there anything else you'd like to share with us about commentating Mm, no, I just think like, you know, so real, real quick, I don't know if you've been keeping track. This is kind of a weird question to ask, but yeah. do you know how many tournaments you've been to consecutively Ooh. without missing a tournament? Good question. I haven't missed one since all last year. Cause I, last year I was juggling like four, four major sports in one year. So it was kind of a lot. I was doing hockey, then baseball, then. So we, we talked to DJ Selkirk this morning yeah. and he said he went to 50 Five zero tournaments in a row without Whoa. missing one. Oh my gosh! Yeah. I mean, he's got me beat because last I was, my season was condensed last year. Like I signed my deal with Tennis Channel. I was supposed to start, but I was I had to finish my hockey season before I could do pickleball full time. When it has to be then close to like because I only missed the first like eight. How many were there last year? Twenty three. Yeah. Twenty five. So I'm going on like 18 straight, accurate. I think. No, no, no. Add three more this year. So like 21. It's pretty okay. good. Okay, so you got to get a little streak. Good little streak. Yeah. Yeah. Decent. Yeah. And this time they had me doing um, play-by-play and sideline. You want to talk about cluster? This is what people don't realize about broadcasting, Tyler. Here's a good one. We'll wrap with this. Like 
TV and not necessarily the pickleball TV, but like when we're on the national windows, it's a little higher stress. Like you got to be on your, you got to be on your intros. You got to be on the like, here's the flow. Here's the rundown. This is what we're talking about. You have to nail your lines. Like it's go time because you're not messing around when you're on box. There are so many things that go wrong in TV that like, like we'll start with Friday night. I was doing sideline for Dave and Adam just like offered the PPA to help with that role because we're a little bit short staff right now. So I did that. Literally in the middle of the broadcast, our audio goes out and Warren, our producer, is in my ear. He's like, hey, Mish, we need you to take us back from break and fill for two minutes on uh, the match until Dave and Adam's mic come back up. I'm like, okay, first of all, this isn't going to work for many reasons. They're not going to hear what I've been just talking about the last two minutes. Why don't we bring the mic up to the booth so then Dave can at least chat with Adam and then we can and they can toss it to whatever. So I like sprint up to the booth, run the mic up, they get their stuff done, whatever. That, you know what I mean? Like stuff like that where it's like problem solving actively in the moment. And then also having to come up with two minutes of BS of how to fill this thing without fumbling and with without an analyst. You know what I mean? So anyways, and then Sunday it's like I'm in the booth doing play-by-play play and I'm not complaining because this is all good. But I'm doing play-by-play play and then I have to switch gears. I have to have my questions lined up. I have to have the trophy presentation lined up. It's like I was doing two different roles at the same time. I don't think people really value or appreciate like how hard that can be and... I've been doing it long enough yeah. that I don't think it's... Our next guest is Ben Lynn, so we're going oh, to Ah, freaking guy. Yeah, yeah, ask him how I performed this week, and he's probably displeased. Misha, like, are get you her big, out. Are she you doesn't big... know the sport. All she says is the score. I'm like, <laughs> what do you talk about when everyone's just dinking to death for freaking... And we're in there for five hours. We don't even get a time to pee. I don't even get to eat Misha, during Championship are you, Sunday. Are you a big golfer? Like, what are those pictures behind you? Oh, no, maybe I golfer? should. I think I have a voice for golf. Yeah, I mean, I just it looks like your office. Are you a golf fan, or what's going I on? I don't golf, but I want to. I'm really. All right, Mish, where do people where do people find you on uh, social media? I was like, I gotta go. You... Leave me alone, uh, Mish yeah. McMahon. If only come if you are not a troll. I am not interested in defending myself on Twitter anymore. At Mish underscore McMahon M C M A H O N. And thank you all for coming and for having me. You're the best. Stay on for another one or two minutes. Thanks again for tuning in.